But imagine if police had in their arsenal something that could scan the crime scene amidst all of the chaos without risking lives. It's an idea that may soon be jumping from the drawing board to the real world of dangerous rescues, riots, and even bank robberies. Keith Morrison has this dateline to start. In this scene from the movie Uncommon Valor, a helicopter is the only bridge between life and sure death in the battlefields of Vietnam. But in real life, away from Hollywood, helicopters really do play an important role in our lives. They're used every day to douse mountain fires, rescue people from desperate situations, and help us weave through traffic to and from work. But now, a research team at Carnegie Mellon University has set its sights on perfecting a different kind of helicopter, one they hope will be used by real cops and rescue teams to save even more lives. Program coordinator Omid Amidi. It's this maneuverable, self-flying platform that's in the air at your command or has a mind of its own. Ordinary helicopters are flown by hot-blooded men and women. Amidi's chopper, on the other hand, is controlled by something with a different kind of flash has no ego, and is definitely more complex. You could say it has all the right stuff. What sets his helicopter apart is that there's no human pilot on board. The robo-chopper, as they call it, instead uses a sophisticated computer and some very high-tech systems to fly. The helicopter has two independent systems. One of them is the global positioning, GPS which uses a constellation of satellites that are orbiting the Earth. The unmanned chopper doesn't quite have a mind of its own. Flight coordinates have to be programmed into its computer. And once airborne, the computer activates the GPS and a special vision system. And we put together a perception system or a vision system that can actually look at its environment and fly the helicopter. The two cameras on board monitor depth perception, enabling the chopper to fly without crashing into anything in its path. They also send images back to the command center. At about $80,000, the 150-pound robo-chopper is quite a bargain compared to normal choppers. These helicopters cost probably as much as one rotor blade of a real helicopter. Small price tag, but potentially invaluable to someone lost in a flood or the open sea. These helicopters could be deployed to go there with life jackets on it and drop the life jackets to the people. The project is still in the works, but Amidi hopes that one day his chopper will be sent unmanned into war zones and riots and on rescue missions. If you have 10 crafts, they can be flying in line together, just completely covering an area very systematically. And one of these guys is gonna find it. The robo chopper isn't strong enough to hoist a body from the sea or a mountainside. But if trouble breaks out in multiple areas of a city, a small fleet of robo-choppers could take to the air, filming the activities on the ground. I can have five of these things in the five trouble spots in the city at the same time. And the helicopter provides images to policemen on the ground. Amidi feels that by far the most important task to come is search and rescue. Dateline decided to put the robo-chopper to the test to find out how well it performs while searching for a lost soul. In our case, a very patient mannequin in the red jacket. Plugging in the search route coordinates is the first step. When the computer has the data, the robo-chopper takes off with the GPS and the vision system fully activated. The search for the camper begins. If the helicopter is sent to a certain rough location to find a particular victim, the helicopter could easily relay back the coordinates of a point in which he has the victim in view. The chopper's eyes scanned the ground, processing 60 images per second, until it finally locked in on the camper's red jacket. The onboard computer then sends the image to the team's command center. Armed with the camper's whereabouts, a ground team could then bring the person to safety. But when the test runs are over and the robo-chopper makes its grand entrance into the real world of search and rescue, Omid Omidi is convinced it's going to prove itself a true hero. I really see this thing finding victims in the trees, in the trails, in the water. I really see this craft saving people's lives. In the next few months, the Defense Department will be sponsoring tests to see if the robo-chopper lives up to its promise in the real world. In the meantime, Hollywood's calling. Two movie companies are interested in using the robo-chopper for aerial camera work.
decades, helicopter pilots have risked their lives on search and rescue missions or carrying out military maneuvers. Soon, some of the most dangerous tasks facing pilots could be completed by computers instead of humans. Dick Wilson has a story. We've seen them saving lives in search and rescue operations, dropping aerial lifelines to the sea, or pulling up stranded victims caught by deadly floods, and even stalking suspected criminals from the air. All these helicopters share the common need for a human pilot. But what if that need could be met by a computer and the craft could fly itself? Researchers at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh are working on an autonomous helicopter. It's piloted by a set of computers, cameras, and navigation devices. And I started thinking about aerial robotics and using uh, helicopters for precise hovering and inspection and that kind of application. Omid Amidi and his colleagues demonstrated their robotic helicopter on a blustery hilltop in the Pennsylvania countryside. It was so windy the craft had to be set down. The second flight looks smoother with less vibration. Back in the lab, Amidi explained it uses a global positioning system and video cameras linked to several onboard computers to maneuver to specific sites. This is our main sensors. There's two down ground pointing cameras. And this is what our visual tracking system uses to track objects on the ground. And that's how it navigates the helicopter. The box that you see down here contains all the computing, which is seven digital signal processing engines and a real-time processor and image processing equipment, all built for this particular helicopter. He began his research indoors using a small electric motor copter linked to a computer and a hand control device. Graduating to the larger craft made by Yamaha of Japan for crop dusting, Amidi's team outfitted it with a computer guidance system. The team uses a conventional radio control device like that used by model airplane hobbyists as a backup to the computer. The helicopter could go out there using GPS to a particular point, and once it gets there, switch on its vision and look around till it actually detects, you know, the particular object or the victim. And then once it finds it, provide a stable view of the object as long as it's there. Uh. And if it moves, it should move around till real help arrives. Uh. So that would be my dream mission. Yeah. The next step, test flights over the horizon, out of sight with a safe return. There are lots of potential commercial uses, including inspection of power lines. If the autonomous helicopter really catches on, it's enough to make a TV traffic reporter worry about job security. Dick Wilson, CNN, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania.